Hello and welcome to Tech 18. I am Ahmad Adnan and in this video, we are going to discuss about how we can export our Power BI report based on single single user and send an email to them individually. I tried a lot of options and I have also seen you a lot of comment. Thank you for keeping me motivated on that and I have managed to do that. I am going to share with you all through this video. Before going into that in detail, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now let's get started. Okay, this is my Power BI report. As an example, as usual, I'm using this regional sales. These are the tables which I have in this report, which is region and sales, north, south, east, west, and then the sales here. And after that, I also have one more table which it contains the region as well as the email ID of the user, those who have access to that particular region. It's a kind of dynamic role level security. And then I have a separate user master where it just contains the email ID of the user. And if you look into the relationship here for this small data model, the region sale is connected to one to one for region access and region access is connected from the user. So basically user will filter the region access and this will filter the region sale accordingly. So here right now this is showing as one to one because it is connected to region and region. But in future, if it has one user has multiple ac region access, then it will be many one to many or many to many will be here. So that is a different case that rollable security. I have made a separate course on that how you can implement the rollable security in Power BI. If you haven't checked it out, I recommend you to watch that video. So that you can clearly understand how you can define the rollable security in that there are multiple types of rollable security in power bi so coming back here so once i did all this relationship here as you can see i have just added a sample thing here one is this is coming from direct user table and this is basically coming from the region sales and region access which i have taken the users from this one and the sales from this one so this is one table graph matrix graph and then here i have just used this one uh, region and sales just to show you on this one. So after doing all these things, I published this into Power BI service. So let's go back to Power BI service now. So I have published this into my Power BI service and this is how it will look like. And right now I am the admin of this Power BI and the tenant. So I have access to everything. Now how it will work based on the Power Automate thing. This is done so far. And if you see this Power Automate, so far, this is running successfully since last almost uh, one week. So this is happily working on this one. And then if I edit this flow, so I will tell you step by step what I have done to achieve this result. So first of all, I use this as a reoccurrence. In my previous videos for this link related topic, I have used a kind of buttons on Power BI report. So I also seen your comments. So that's why I have now used a different method. So it's a reoccurrence. So on a daily basis, it is going to run this flow. So every one day, and then I'm going to run a script here, run against the Power BI data set. The reason for this, so why I have used is basically, I want to get the user, list of users available on that particular data set. Either you can get it from your master table directly from SQL or Excel file from the SharePoint. But why specifically I have used this Power BI is because there are some cases which I also face on a real time situation like for a particular day, if you want to run this one, then there will be chances there is no trans transaction for a particular customer. There will be chances that there will be no transaction for a particular customer on a particular day. So you don't want to export that for a particular customer and send them a blank report. So that is not look feel good. So in order to avoid that, I just want to extract the users from this particular day on this same data set, and then I will do the process. So how I have used this DAX query is basically it's really simple. You again go back to Power BI Desktop. You see now I have this user table and also I have this user list here. So two of them I have it here. And now on this example, if you take, if you see here, we have this user and the North East South. And also if you click on this one, I just use it from the region access and this is this one user report. And if I expand this filter option, I have used here, if I notice this thing, I use this sales option is greater than zero. So the reason for this is basically today, how many sales are there particular persons, uh, if it is greater than zero or not. 
So right now, this is just an example I have used without any date here. If there is a sales greater than zero, then it is showing up for this list of users. In real case, how, how it will look like is generally, we need to add the date as well, and the date is equal to today. And also the sales is greater than zero. In your case, it can be any date or it can be any value where you want to specify that, and then you will take the distinct user from that particular case. So in my case, I'm taking this greater than zero sales and list of users. So on how you can export this DAX query is basically you need to open up your view and then performance analyzer. So once you click on that, it will open up the performance analyzer here and we have options start recording. Just start recording on this one. And then if you open up this performance analyzer, then only you will be able to see this option, basically analyze this visual. So once you click on this one, you don't need to refresh all your page. You just need to click on that particular visual then it will refresh only that particular visual. So it has taken almost one second here. And if I expand this one, so now you see it has given a DAX query here and visual display and other here. So we can copy the DAX query from here. It's copied. Now to show you for an example, I'll just open a notepad and paste the DAX query here. It has generated beautifully a DAX query what I need, and this is the detail of the tax query here. So the same tax query, you just need to copy from how I did here, and then go to Power Automate, and then paste here. That's it, as simple as that. So when we run this query, it actually generates this list of users like this, how we have it in Power BI. That's amazing, right? So after this step, we need to add a filter function. So this is basically the filter, you see it here icon, filter icon. If I click on add here and add an action, and then click on filter, it is actually a filter array, which is the data operation. So, and then I have just used on this one. And if you click on this one from, it will just give me these three options. One is row, body, and the first table row is basically query results as an array of rows. So from this, the column I have taken it to be automatic, you want to do it manually you can also do that using a custom option but for now i just want to be as an autonomy automatic because i know this is going to return only one value from that particular column only one column so the next step is first json here basically you need to create add add an action and then type the first json it will come up this control here it will come up this flow here and then here you need to select the content to be first row of this data set so it's the same thing which I'm calling it from this previous step. So now you may think about what is the use of this previous step here. So the reason for that is basically I'm not a JSON expert, so I don't know about how this will work for the schema. So to get that schema, I just use the previous step here, the CSU table, and then I run this flow without adding these steps here. So basically what had happened during that time is it ran the flow till that step, and then it has given me the output. So if you look into this previous run on this one, let me show you the history of this one. It actually gives the input and output. Here for this create CSV, this has given an input like this, and this is the output for this one. So I copied this thing, control C, and then Control C, and then I go back on this one, edit this flow again. And in the first JSON step, I have used that schema. So if I expand this one, and it has an option here, generate from sample. If I click on this one, and then I need to paste here the schema what we need. And once we are okay with this one, we need to click on done here. So if you click on done, this is going to generate an object like this. So to confirm you about this step, I just want to copy the existing one into a notepad. So I will copy and paste it on the notepad. So this is the one which I need to copy and paste. And this is how I will paste it on the JSON generated from sample. And this is going to generate this kind of array. So if I go back to Power Automate, so I'll expand this phrase JSON and then I will have copied already. 
So let's click on generate from sample and then click on paste on this one. So clicking done will clicking done will overwrite your current schema and then click on done. You see, this is the schema of how it has written. If you are a JSON expert, you know how it works, then you can directly type it here. If you are not, then you need to do this little bit step here. So that's the reason I have added it here. If you are familiar with the JSON, then you don't need this step and all this stuff which I have shown in a previous one or two minutes. You can just directly come here, use this flow as a phrase JSON, and then click on the content, select this one, first row from this Power BI data set, run as a query against, and then paste the schema. That's it. So after that, we need to add an initialize variable, which is basically add a variable, initialize a variable, and then give it a name, which is I given here as a user email. And then the type is a string for me. We have multiple options, but here we need a string here. So we are initializing this one. And then if you see here, it has given an option about apply to ease. Basically, what I did here, I just used a set variable. After initializing a variable, I have used here a set variable. And then I have just picked this one, the initial variable name on this one. And then if I click on this one, it has an option about what I need to do. Here in the phrase JSON, I have used the first JSON, I have used this region access user, which is basically the user email ID. Once I click on that, it knows that it has a multiple records inside to that. So that's the reason it has automatically taken as an apply to each here. So if you want to show in detail, if I click on add an action and then click on add an action again, and then I will use the set a variable. We have option here set variable. If I click on this one, it is asking me to pick a variable. I will pick the name here as an user email. And in the value section, if I click here and then pick the values from this one, then it has automatically added this apply to each option. It means it understands that it has a multiple record. So that's why it has taken automatically. So let's delete this step. So we have apply to each here. So this we have set up this variable. And after that, we need to use this original one, which is export to Power BI reports, export to file for Power BI reports. So here we need to pick up our workspace name, the report name, and the format how we want to export with a PDF, Excel, or PPT. Or uh, no, Excel, we don't have it here, but PDF, PPT, X, and then PNG. So here we have workspace ID and the report ID name here. And here, what I have done here as a report level filters on this one. So I have not used here the row level security. So if you see here, I have not used the row level security here. I am using this report level filters. So the reason access is basically the table name slash user is the column name inside to the table and equal to instead of equal to we need to use EQ and within the single bracket, I need to pass that email ID. This email ID is nothing but this variable which what we have set up on the top here. Once I click on that one, it will give, me, give this variable here. I have selected this user email. And after that, I have not used any of the other options here. And that's it. Finally, I have used this send an email option. Here again, I'm going to use the same email ID here from this variable what we have set up here, user email. And then I have given a monthly statement as a kind of subject name. And here we can add a body of the message. And on the show advanced options, if I click on expand this one, here, here we can give a name of the attachment, which is attachment name as document.pdf. And attachment is basically the body from this Power BI dataset. Export to file for Power BI report, that dataset I'm selecting up here. So another we have sensitivity label and reply to and importance. So want to set up, we can set up that value here. Rest everything is same no change from the previous videos. So by doing that, if I expand this option, if you show you here, this is the report what I have got. And you see it here. This has filtered to user amalatanti at gmail.com. So this is my email ID and it has given me only for this particular value here. And this on the left side, it is not linked with anything else. So that's why it is showing up everything. But our main case is here on the right side, which is a user. And I have this only north, south, and west, and I have this value for this one. Now I have these basically two users on this particular data set. One is mohammadadnati at gmail.com, another is hotmail.com. 
So what we are seeing here is for the gmail.com. And if you see for the hotmail.com, and now if you see here, this is my Hotmail account. And I also received an email here with the same subject and the same document name. But if I but if I open up this document, I see here Mohammed Nanti at hotmail.com on this area, and it is only filtered to East here. And whereas in the Gmail, it's my Mohammed Nanti at gmail.com, and I have these three filters here, which is North, South, and East. I mean North, South, and West. So two email IDs with the same data set and filtered to two different data as well. So finally, it is solved here after working a lot of things on to this one. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you like this video, just hit the big thumbs up button. If you have any queries and feedback, please let me know in the comment section below. For more such kind of videos, please let me know in the comment section what type of video which you need. I'm planning to cover more in detail about fabric in future. Let me know what's your thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.